Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Jordan back again from PictureMonk.com, and here is the new series that I was kind of teasing about in the uh, the last episode of the Picture Monk podcast, and this is the segment that I like to call "In a Snap." Now, In a Snap is basically just going to be every Thursday I'm going to release a, uh, a shorter episode of the Picture Monk Podcast, and it basically just talks about one topic, and I'm just basically going to hit home on that topic, and that's about it. I'm not going to go into news or anything like that. So um, uh, every Tuesday, you're going to still get the regular Picture Monk Podcast, but every Thursday, you're going to get the In a Snap segment, and you don't have to worry about signing, uh, signing into iTunes and subscribing to another podcast. I'm just going to go ahead and release it on this, this channel because it just makes more sense. I don't want to have, you know, 10 podcasts out there that that you guys have to keep subscribing to and checking and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, like I said, for this for this uh, series, it's basically just going to be one episode or one, one, one topic for an episode. And I'm basically going to talk about that. And, uh, and for this, uh, the next three or so uh, episodes, I'm basically going to talk about the exposure triangle. So I'm going to hit each each point of the exposure triangle. And this is just because you may be a beginning photographer out there and, you know, you may need to kind of get a refresher on what the exposure triangle is and what each point of the triangle does and that sort of thing. So for this first episode, I'm going to talk about the, uh, the aperture and what aperture means. So if you ever, uh, just look on the back of your camera, your, the, uh, LCD screen on the back of your camera and you see an F number, what that basically is, is just a representation of what aperture is. So what you're, what aperture you're choosing. Uh, and so a, there's a lot of different aperture, uh, apertures out there. It just depends on what lens you have. So, so you may hear some people say I have a 51.8 and the 1.8 is the uh, the lowest aperture that that can go, the widest it can go, and 1.8 is is very very wide. Um, and then you also have lenses that go down to f22, and some even uh, even my old kit lens went down to f32. And so that means uh, it's a very, very small hole, kind of like a, it's not as drastic as a pinhole camera, but it's a very small hole to not let as much light in. So when a lot of people change their aperture, what they're really doing is controlling depth of field. So what depth of field is, is the amount of uh, area that is in focus in your image. So if you have F4, what F4 means is, I'm just going to use basic numbers. So F4 and F22, I'm just going to go between those two. So F4 is basically uh, what the inside of your lens looks like. So F4 would be a very, very large opening in your lens. And that lets that's, lets uh, the maximum amount of light in for that lens. And But it also produces, produces a more shallow depth of field. And what that means is if you're taking a picture of a bottle, for instance, uh, you'll, you'll zoom into the bottle and you take a picture and you, uh, you know, you'll, your focus, where you focus on the bottle is going to be tack sharp pretty much. But you can see as you start coming forward a little bit in your image, just imagining in a 3D space, uh, the, the area, the little bit of area before your, the bottle and a little bit of area after the back is going to be out of focus. And that's what F4 does. It, it'll, it'll uh, you know, give you a minimum amount of space to be in focus. So uh, F22, on the other hand, if you did the same photo, didn't change anything, but had uh, F22, um, you would take a picture of the bottle and you would still focus on the same thing, but a, a greater amount uh, ahead of you, uh, in front of the bottle, basically, um, would be in focus and you would get to see more detail in the background. Now, there's a lot of variations that depend on this. There's the hyperfocal range and all that kind of stuff, but in basic terms, that's what that does. And so uh, that's one thing a lot of people like to do uh, when they're taking photos of water, let's let's say waterfalls for example. If you are on a uh, out on a bright sunny day and you want to take pictures of flowing waterfalls, um, a lot of people will stop their aperture down to f twenty two. That way it'll let as mu- as less light in as possible. So therefore they can get a longer shutter speed. Now I'll talk about shutter speed on the next episode, but. Um, that, that's basically what they do. They, they manipulate the aperture to uh, allow them to have less light or more light, depending on what kind of subject they're taking. So uh, that's about it. That's the basic terms of aperture. And again, in one of the other episodes, I'm going to go more deeper into that with the other elements of the exposure triangle. So like I said, guys, I hope you enjoyed this little quick segment. This is basically just really quick tips. That's why it's called in a snap. Uh, there's no, <laughs> there's the pun in there for the uh, snap of a camera and the, you know, in a snap, that kind of thing. So 
I uh, hope you enjoyed that quick little segment. You're still going to get the regular Picture Monk podcast every Tuesday, but look forward to the In a Snap segment every Thursday. And uh, that's about it. Uh, as always, please please uh, feel free to go to picturemonk.com slash podcast, and you can rate the podcast there. And I would really much appreciate it. So thanks again for listening, guys, and I will see you guys in the next episode of In a Snap. <laughs>